in the late 80s, my brother and I started doing uh, ridge till, uh, which was the newest thing at that time with a lot of cultivation of row crops. And, and then we hit some really dry years. And in the early 90s, we started doing no-till farming. And we did no-till farming separate from our livestock operation. Uh, our, our crop ground was crop ground and our pasture ground was pasture ground. And over the years, um, that didn't really change too much until probably, what, maybe six, seven years ago? We, we really wanted to get cattle integrated into our cropland, um, putting more into the, into the soil, so the soil you know, will, will give back to us even more. So, so our goal is to get to the point where we're not feeding any stored feeds over the winter time. And last year we got, I think probably we fed for 50 days. Um, and last year was a tough winter. We had about 250 acres of, of cover crop in that, in those five uh, quarters. And I would say uh, half of it, we windrowed. We, we, had, we hired a, a guy to come out with his self-propelled disc vine and he windrowed it. And uh, we wish we would have done all of it like that. We found that the quality kept in that row and the cows were able to find it through the snow up to a certain point. We actually had to go out there with a, a loader tractor and show them where it was at one point. But once they found it, they went right up the row. Yeah. Um, but this year, we're, we're doing that again, uh, but we'd like to, to bale some of it up and, and leave the bales out there, because then they'd be able to get to everything. You know, they, you know, the bale grazing is what they call it. Been trying to add more enterprises to, uh, as they call it, stacked uh, systems. And you don't want to add a new enterprise too quickly because there's a real learning curve to uh, something you've never done before.